And the only way that... Amen. And I'll have you know the devil's going to challenge this. The devil's not happy about what's going on. And you can expect him to try to sow something or put something or let something rise up among us. But saints of God, we got to keep the Spirit of God in charge. Amen. Amen. So may we learn some things from what we've been through. May we take some things to heart as we rejoice tonight. Because we want to be able to continue to rejoice. Amen. I believe God has led us through a wilderness, led us through some tough times, but we needed it. We needed it. It was for our good. It was for our benefit. And so we're thankful for God's blessings to us. I thank God for how he led me. I've had to make some hard decisions in my life. Things that I didn't completely understand. I remember I went from one place to another just hoping that it was my final move. That it was my final destination, but I knew in my heart it quite wasn't. There was just something about it that I just felt like it wasn't quite it. And I remember when God was dealing with us along these lines, even along the lines of what you're preaching, because long before you preach something of this nature, you've got to digest it yourself. And when you, when you begin to realize what the message demands, where that's going to put you, what all that will entail to come out and label the harlot the harlot, you start calling Church of God Babylon. Yeah. You take a long look in that cup. And I will tell you this, saints, I didn't know all that we were going to go through, but I knew God warned us. Not going to be easy. And I told God and I told a few of the saints, if anything ever got started in Columbus, Ohio, it will only be because of God. Thank God. Thank you, Lord. There's no rational explanation. There's no reason why anything should exist here tonight. But God saw fit. And so I'm humbled tonight. Because this is nothing I have done. This is not my message. This is God's message. And he said his word would not return void. And it has not. You stand with God, and I don't care who stands with you. You stand with God. Amen. And God will make sure you come out on top. God will make sure you come out right. Amen. Amen. So I'm not of the, na of the belief tonight that we're out of the woods. There's more ground to take. There's a long way to go. And I thank God that we have only experienced the tip of the iceberg tonight. Amen. Brother, let's not relax. Let's not let up. May this fire us up some more. May we turn up the intensity a little more. May God help us to go after this thing just as hard as we've been going after him when we desperately needed something from God. May we not lose that, amen, that drive and that motivation and that desire. God, I need you more now. Yeah. I'm, all, I'm convinced that almost, it's almost right after victory you need God the most. Yeah. The devil try to get you to relax and try to let up and I'm safe now and I'm secure now. You're, you're, you're leaving yourself wide open. Yeah. So may God help us. Our resting, our eternal rejoicing will be in heaven. So as long as we're on this side, we've got to fight on our hand. We've got to fight on our hand. Revelation, the 18th chapter tonight. Revelation 18 and verse number 1. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon, the great, is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Verse 4, I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, 
my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her, even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to the works, to her works, in the cup which she hath filled to her double. How much she hath glorified herself, and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. As we set the picture tonight, and we'll be transitioning out of these first three verses that we have spent some significant time dealing with, and we're trying to focus on verses four through eight tonight and move along in this study. As we just want to lay a little groundwork, we see in the first three verses to summarize an anointed ministry, a God-called ministry that had the Spirit of God, which had great power. That's what great power is is when you have the Spirit of God, began to show the glory of God by bringing light to folks. The bringing light to folks. The earth was lightened with His glory. And that earth is a picture of Protestant religion. That beast came up out of the earth. Amen. Over here, that Protestant beast came up out of the earth, or which is showing us that it is a system of religion that is built on the ideas and the opinions of men and not the Word of God. And that's earmarks of protestantism they have written creeds they have their own marks uh, their own characteristics that make their specific denomination who they are and so when the ministry came they began to label amen what that was protestantism and there were people that were dwelling in these earthen systems of religion and the ministry with great power came and the earth was lightened or light came to these people that were sitting under a darkness or in the dark and cloudy day where there was a mixture of truth and error. They got the clear light of the message and were able to come out of that Protestant system and be set free. That is what he's talking about when he says the earth was lightened. The earth was lightened with his glory. There were some saints in there that needed some light. Amen. In verse 2, he says, He cried mightily with a strong voice. So they preached a particular message. That Babylon, what was that particular message? Well, that Babylon's in apostasy. Amen. Or Babylon is apostasy. Amen. Nobody starts out Babylon. Amen. Nobody starts out Babylon. Amen. People become Babylon. Systems become Babylon. Congregations become Babylon. Ministries become Babylon, brother. That's why every minister that's ever become Babylon, brother, at one time, they were preaching the truth. Uh, they, were, they were solid. They were on fire for God, brother. But when something goes into apostasy, it's talking about a people who walk against light, uh, who reject light, amen, and go into apostasy. You say, Brother Nathan, what about the poor folks that grow up in false religion, amen, and don't know any better. They don't know the church of God. Well, brother, they're not in apostasy tonight. You can grow up in a false religious denomination and not be in apostasy. Amen, apostasy is a rejection of light. Amen, you grow up under that atmosphere, you grow up under that condition, you're not responsible for light. Brother, listen, that's why God calls his people out of there, amen, because if there's saints down there, it's a people that's been walking in the light, they just need to be revealed where they're at so they can come out. You're not going to find people who have imbibed apostasy coming out of Babylon. Apostate people don't come out, brother. Apostate people... Listen, that's why there is no hope for some ministers. Come on. They walked against light, brother. They had light. They walked against... They're not coming out tonight. They're not coming out tonight. That's why I know that these broken down, raggedy fellowships are not coming back into fellowship ever again, brother. God's not bringing them back up to Zion because he don't call people out of something that he intends to fix. Amen. If he intended to fix it, he tells the saints to stay there. Because he need them there if he's going to fix it. But he said, Babylon can't be healed. Babylon can't be fixed. So I got one solution. Come out of her. Amen. I know that's a tough cup to swallow, but he got to swallow it anyways. Amen. That Babylon is an apostasy. That's the message. She's fallen. 
She's fallen. What made her so? What made her apostate unclean spirits? That's just what the Bible says. What's the next thing he talked about? Unclean spirits. Brother, the earmark of Babylon is that they have unclean spirits or they have spirits that are not of the Holy Spirit. Brother, you stay down under that influence, and that's what we're talking about, influences, spirits. You stay under influence that is not of the Spirit of God, you become unclean. Amen. What makes them unclean? They don't have the Spirit of God. Amen. It was all inclusive. All nations have drunk. All inclusive. They have all drunk of the wine, including the church of God, or what we have known to be the church of God. All nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath. Amen. All inclusive. Amen. They have committed spiritual fornication. What do you mean? They wouldn't submit to the head. Brother, when we don't submit to Jesus Christ, someone else is in charge. Brother, the husband's the head of the home. Christ is the head of the church. Amen. When a people refuse to submit to the headship of Christ, man becomes in charge and they become a system. And they become a system. If we're going to be the church of God, we got to submit to the headship of Christ. Christ is the head. And if you you start, amen, uh, uh, giving your allegiance to something other than the head, you start heeding something other than the head, you're committing spiritual fornication. The merchants of the earth are waxing rich. The merchants is a picture of a sectarian ministry. We spoke about this last week. Amen. They don't deal in truth. The Bible says to buy the truth and sell it not. As we see last week, amen, these merchants of the earth, amen, they make merchandise of the people of God. They don't care about souls. They don't care about souls. Babylon never has cared about your soul. They pretend like they care about your soul. They'll say they care about your soul, but I'll tell you what they care about, their sect. They care about their sect. Amen. They want you in as much as you'll make them look good. Amen. If you got talent, amen, they'll use it. But you better use it for their sect. Amen. You better make sure that you give allegiance to the sect. Amen. They better, you better make sure you pay homage to the sect, brother. Amen. Go try to go use your liberty somewhere else. Amen. Don't try to exercise your God-given talent somewhere else. Amen. Don't go and try to preach your anointed message somewhere else. Amen. You're ours. You're our property. Why? You're supposed to bear our mark. You're supposed to bear our mark. And we can't buy or sell unless you do. Amen. There are ministers. They ain't going to let you buy or sell unless you bear their mark. Unless you bear their mark. There's no buying and selling. That's why they're the merchants of the earth, brother. Amen. And they've waxed rich. Why? Making merchandise out of souls. They don't care. They don't care about souls. So what in essence are these first three verses trying to do? Reveal Babylon to people. The ministry is trying to show people what Babylon is. But brother, it's more than just reveal being, uh, it's more than just getting an understanding of Babylon. There's a commission. There's something to do. There's an action to take. God is not interested in just defining Babylon for us tonight. There's a reason why he's defining Babylon for us tonight. Because the next facet of this message was, come out of her. Brother, it's not good enough to just know what Babylon is tonight. It's not good enough to just have an understanding of what Babylon is tonight. But with understanding comes responsibility. With light, there comes responsibility to walk in the light. So if God has shown you what Babylon is, there is only one next step to make, and that is to come out of her, my people. If God has, amen, been faithful and merciful enough to show someone what Babylon is, brother, he is not doing so to waste his breath tonight. He expects something out of you. He expects a response, brother. God does not send a message 
just to send a message, brother. Amen. But he sends a message so that there will be a response to that message. God doesn't just show you what something is, but he also shows you what to do with what you heard, brother. It's they met a message that is crystal clear. It's so plain tonight. Brother, if Babylon is falling, God says, come out of her tonight. Amen. That's the message of the hour, brother. We're dealing with it tonight. We're dealing with it tonight. God in his mercy is sending a message. Amen. To the church. To help souls not just get an understanding of what Babylon is, but so they can also come out of her. But it's hard to come out of something if you first don't have the understanding that it's Babylon. You can't. So God reveals it to you. God shows it. He may not show you every detail. He may not show you every symbol. He may not show you all the, amen, all the depths of it. But he gives you enough to know, I got to get out of here. Amen. God will give you enough. And God wants to see what you'll do with the light that he does give you. The next facet of this message was come out of her. Brother, I get some literature in the mail and in my email. And amen, people sending me stuff all the time wanting to argue over symbols and revelation and this, that, and the other. Brother, I want you to know I ain't got no time for it. Believe what you want. About a symbol. I, brother, I could be wrong, but I'll tell you one thing I'm right about tonight. Is I look across the condi- at the conditions across this land, brother. You don't believe the seven seal? Fine. I ain't going to wrangle with you about it. But you cannot deny that there are sectish conditions across this land. And I believe God has something to say about it tonight. So you don't know about the seven ages and all that? That's fine. Suit yourself. Amen. But listen. Amen. There are sectish spirits at work under the name Church of God. And it is just as Protestant as what they were dealing with in 1880. It's the same exact spirit tonight. Brother, listen. I could read everything you wrote. I can listen to everything you have to say. But brother, it doesn't change the conditions tonight. Brother, I can have all the knowledge of all prophecy tonight, and that ain't going to do me a lick of good if I can't see with my own two eyes the conditions that are existing under what calls itself the church of God. There are people tonight that probably know Revelation better than I do, and that's fine, brother. Amen. But they don't don't see the conditions. Brother, listen, there are people tonight that can break down Revelation from one, chapter 1 to 22 and they're sitting in a sect tonight and don't even know it. Amen. Brother, I, listen, you can know all prophecy tonight, but if you're sitting down in Babylon, it ain't doing you a lick of good tonight. The message is, if it's Babylon in any time, in any age, in any place, If God shows you babbling, come out of her. Brother, it's the same principle. It's the same principle. You can't stay somewhere where the Spirit of God is not, ever. Brother, listen, God probably showed some brethren in the dark ages they had to make some moves. Brother, when God reveals something to you, you have to make a move. Amen. Come out of her. Come out of her who? And brother, this is why I know people got a misconception of what Babylon is tonight. Because the message to come out of her, my people, is directed to a particular people. That's why I know Babylon's more than flopping on the floor speaking in tongues. That's why I know Babylon is more than just not believing uh, that you can live a holy life. That's why I know Babylon is more than the rapture tonight. That's right. That's right. Come on. I know Babylon is more than a belief that Jesus is going to come set up a kingdom on earth one day. Right. It's more than that tonight, brother. Yeah. Because, amen, listen, if a person isn't living above sin, they're not God's people tonight. Right. God never has accepted anything less than holiness. Amen. In this gospel day dispensation, holiness is the law of the house. God has always, even in the Old Testament, made a difference between the profane and the holy. 
Amen. So listen, if he's sending a message of come out of her, my people, he's talking about a holy people. He's talking about a people that have holiness in their life. He's talking about saved people. And brother, a lot of Church of God pulpits tonight, their only, their only, only time they take a shot at Babylon is when they're talking about people who can't live free from sin. That's about their extent. I've heard them, brother. Amen. About every Sunday they go in on that. About every Sunday they go in about how, oh, there's people out here that teach you can't live above sin. That's Babylon. Well, I don't necessarily disagree with you. But I also know that probably 97% of your audience that morning are all people claiming to be saved and believe what you're preaching as far as living free from sin. It's preaching that gets nowhere. It's preaching that gets nowhere. Amen. What we're dealing with today is God's people who are living a holy life that have the fruit of salvation in their life and yet are in Babylon. That's what we're dealing with tonight. God is not calling people who are flopping on the floor, slobbering at the mouth and speaking in some unknown tongue to come leaping, shouting home to Zion. They got to hit the altar, brother. Might need to get some hands laid on them. Amen. And get the devil cast out of them and get saved and get born again, brother. That's the message they need tonight. Amen. I understand there might be some false religion that needs to be undone. Amen. And God has to reveal some truth to them. But brother, they're not getting called out as his people. They're getting called to an altar of prayer. And brother, we still got a message for the sinner man. That was, amen, the first commission. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel, brother. Amen. Repentance, amen, and repent and be baptized. And we still got that message tonight. And we need that message. Because there's a lot of people bound by sin tonight. Amen, that are lost. Amen, they're on drugs. They're bound by lust. They're on alcohol. They got a filthy mouth. Their lives are all messed up tonight. And they need to hear the message of deliverance. But when we're dealing with what God is speaking to the church tonight, when he says, come out of her, my people, he's talking about a holy people tonight. But that's why it's not you or I's job to determine who's saved and who isn't in all these fellowships tonight. God says that he knows them that are his. He knows them that are here. Amen. You better be careful about some of these hard line statements. Everybody that goes there is going to hell. And everybody that goes there is not saved. That's not so tonight, brother. And furthermore, you got the wrong spirit. Now, brother, I can say that they are a system. Amen. I can say that the authority down there is not the Holy Ghost. I can say that there isn't the evidence of the Spirit of God down there. Amen, but I'm not here to make judgment calls on who's saved and who isn't tonight. There's a general condition across the land. And brother, Lord, be against me to be hard on somebody else when I know how long it took God to reveal some things to me. Amen. Brother, you didn't see battling at the first. I know you didn't see Church of God battling at the first. Amen, some of you were as happy as can be down there for a little while. Some of you defended it. Said my group better than all the rest. I know you might not have said that out loud, but that's how you felt. They need to meet our ministers. You need to come to this camp meeting. Come on, brother. May God wash that away, brother. We need some of that washed away, brother. Hey, man, that's a sectish mindset tonight. Amen. Yeah, there might be saved, but we're first class. They need to come to our group. Amen. This is the body of Christ. Everybody else is kind of less than. Until what? That split to the four winds and crashed and burned. Amen. And you're left there scratching your head saying, wow, maybe we're not all that in a bag of chips. 
And God began to reveal some things to you. Amen. God began to show you what battling all about. Brother, listen to me. About all these fellowships got the same spirit. Brother, when you start learning how to discern the spirit, you'll start making some connections. You know what the problem is? We've tried to discern too much in the flesh like we were talking about Sunday. Amen. And we made some connections in the flesh. Bible says to know no man after the flesh. Amen. Don't know any man after the flesh. I know you after the spirit tonight. And brother, as long as we have the spirit of God, we'll be just fine. We'll be just fine. Brother, I might got some light you ain't got. You might have some light I don't have tonight. But brother, if we got the same spirit, we're going to be all right tonight. Brother, we are contending for the faith. But to contend for the faith, we must endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit till we all come to the unity of the faith. God is not calling people out of just false doctrine tonight. Because, brother, you can renounce a false doctrine and still have a bad spirit tonight. The call out of Babylon is to touch not the unclean thing. God's people are not sinners. This message was never directed to sinners. It was directed to saints my people, those spirits, this is why it's so dangerous, those spirits will eventually affect you. And not only will they affect you, they will infect you. It is, if you come under the influence of that cup, brother, brother, listen, the revelation is dealing much more with the spirit of things than what those spirits produce. Amen. And the church of God has been spending so much time dealing with what has been produced in Babylon instead of dealing with what caused it to get there. Amen. I'm interested in the cause tonight. Brother, you can fix your doctrine and this, that, and the other, but if you don't fix your spirit, you're just as babbling when you started. And that means come out. Amen. Amen. Tonight there are people that have been influenced because of spirits down in Babylon. Yeah. Things people used to see so clear. Brother, there are people that saw things clearer than you did. Could have broke things down to you. Amen. And tonight they have lost their zeal. They have lost their sting. They have lost the essence of what they once were because they are the product of that system. Amen. How did they change? They got affected. They got affected. There were times they wouldn't have spoken so loosely with their tongue. There were times they wouldn't have indulged in certain activities because of the Spirit of God resting so heavy upon their life but they got affected. Listen to me. Worldliness tonight is rampant in almost every Church of God congregation across this land. Amen. You know why? Compromise in the pulpit. Compromise in the pulpit. Brother, there is a clear distinction between holy and unholy tonight. Amen. There is a clear distinction between the world and the church tonight. But I want to tell you, when we don't keep the lines clear, when we don't preach the message under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, amen, another spirit begins to have influence. Amen. Brother, it's not so much about having this uh, in your home or that. It's the spirit of the thing we're dealing with tonight. And when the Holy Ghost isn't able to have its way, other spirits come in. That's why you see the spirit of compromise. That's why you see the spirit of the world. Brother, they're getting more influence than what the Holy Ghost is allowed to have. Amen. And here you come with your Holy Ghost influence and try to say something about it. And brother, they'll call you a troublemaker. And you have a bad spirit. Amen. And this, that, and the other. Brother, amen. It's not that I have a bad spirit. I have a different spirit. 
Amen. And not, I don't have a bad spirit. I have a different spirit. I know what the Holy Spirit approves of and what he doesn't. Come on. The world is coming in. It has come in. It has come in. Amen, brother. We have lost our power. We have lost our sting because there is a different spirit at work in many places that call themselves the church of God and people are being affected by it tonight. Amen. There's people tonight, they used to know what the church was all about. They used to see you're clear. They used to care. They used to care. They used to have a concern. They used to be burdened. But brother, they kept, they kept under the influence of that spirit. Tonight they just accepted it. Brother, listen. These spirits of battle, it'll take something out of you. Man rule will take the zeal out of you. Brother, it will affect your ability to operate in the spirit. Where there is not Holy Ghost authority, brother, you're under the control of man. And it doesn't matter if the Holy Ghost lays a burden on your heart. You always have to check with the, root, the, the authority that is in charge there before you can freely operate. The Lord might lay a message on your heart. The Lord might lay a message on your heart to go preach somewhere. Amen. And they might have invited you. They might give you the pulpit. But if the leadership that you're under says no, you ain't going nowhere. You're not going anywhere. Brother, you can tell him you have a call to the ministry. You can tell him you have a call to the ministry. But if the boys in charge don't see it, don't feel it, aren't accepting it, you ain't going nowhere. And don't even try it. And don't even try it. Amen. They'll have you set down from every function in the church. Amen. Before you could even blink. Come on. They'll be sitting on your testimony. They'll be sitting on your testimony. Amen. You stand up and talk about the old paths and talk about old time salvation. Brother, they get real quiet around there. By the way, there's a different spirit. The things they used to run the aisles over. The things they used to shout over. The things they used to rejoice over. Now, when the minister goes down those lines, they're moaning and crying about it. There was a time when the Church of God ministry used to be able to freely preach against the world. Preach against the flesh. Amen. Preach the standard, brother. And as I preach Sunday, I know it's not all about that. But brother, listen, if there's one thing in Zion, that should have liberty in Zion. Why? Because your spirit has already brought you up to that standard, brother. Listen, judgment only condemns people who aren't measured. The saints got no problem with judgment. If you're having a trouble, if you're having trouble with judgment, it's because somewhere it condemns your life. Come out of her. The message was come out. The judgment on Babylon is here. It's right now. We're not waiting for God to put judgment on Babylon. He's putting judgment on Babylon right now. That has already started, brother. The vials have already begun to be poured out, brother. God is, amen, he's peeling back some of the darkness here. He's taking the scales off people's eyes, brother. He's loosening some things, brother. He's awakening. We're not waiting for the judgment. Brother, the judgment is here. Amen, we are looking for God to bring some more watchmen. Amen, and to bring some more, amen, to lift up their voice and to cry aloud and to spare not, brother. But it's already here. It's already here. I'm not prophesying tonight. I'm seeing what is already happening. Amen. Amen. It's about every week now. I'm getting a call from somewhere. Somebody saying, Brother Nathan, either I'm crazy or I'm seeing what I think I'm seeing. I had a brother just lately call me. He said, am I crazy, Brother Nathan? Have I lost my mind? I said, you know how many people have called me asking me if there... There's a whole lot of crazy folks right now, brother. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Praise the Lord tonight. Amen. Why? Because this isn't about a person. This isn't about a place. This isn't about a camp meeting. This is the Spirit of God beginning to blow on the bones, brother. 
Listen, you, you would not, you, you don't have it within you to do what this message is requiring. It's not with, it's too much. That's too much. The spirit of God have to bring you up. The spirit of God have to lift you up. Amen. And brother, that's what's happening is God has begun before the message has even gone forth to prepare. But I'm almost convinced 20 years ago this wouldn't have happened. I'm convinced that even 10 years ago the timing wasn't right. Come on. But people have been through so much. They've been let down one time after another. It's become, listen, Babylon has become too obvious that the Spirit of God's not there. The inconsistencies are too much. And brother, we live in an age where you can go on Facebook and look at any church from the Atlantic to the Pacific, brother, and know exactly what's being preached. And people making some connections. Whoa, they ain't got the Spirit of God either. Or wow, that's something different. Come on. God's doing this thing. God's doing this thing. Amen. If you stay in Babylon, if you refuse to come out of her, you will be rendered as the harlot. And she's getting burned up, as you're going to see in Revelation 18 and 19. You will be found unclear with God. People today are more worried about being found unclear with their ministry. They're more worried about being found unclear with where they go to church and the saints and what this one's going to think of them and what that one's going to think of them. Brother, fear God. Fear God. When those six sealed brethren came out and took a stand on Mount Zion, one of the very first things they preached was fear God and give glory unto him. Give glory. And brother, as we come out of this other, this, this, this latter Protestant stage that we've been in, brother, amen, the message is still the same. Fear God and give glory to Him. Amen. There's been too much, there's been too much glorying of man, of flesh, of opinions, of ideas, of personalities, away with all that. Fear God. Amen. Don't fear what man can do to you. Amen. People so scared of what men are going to say about them and what they're going to think about them and what they're going to do. Brother, listen. Amen. They can't do nothing to you tonight. If the Spirit has bid you come, brother, that Spirit of God will make sure that every devil in hell keeps their paws off you. Amen. Come out of her. Come out of God does not just say come out, but he equips, amen, with the grace and the strength to do. Yes. Amen. And brother, listen, those things you were so worried about and so scared about, you're going to find it wasn't even that big a deal. The devil got me up losing sleep and amen, biting my nails and worried about this and worried about that. And God took care of the whole thing, brother. Amen. Worried about how you were going to explain it to so and so. And they said, ah, I already know. Amen. No surprise here. Amen. I saw the writing on the wall a long time ago. Amen. Surprise you're still here. Amen. The come out message is not foreign tonight. People are acting like this come out message is something new. The come out message ain't new tonight. God has always had a come out message. Amen. Prior to 1880, during the dark and cloudy day, during sectarianism, there was no sin charged to those that were in Babylon. None of the saints that were down in Babylon prior to 1880 were ever, nowhere were you going to find where they were charged with sin. Not God's people. Follow me where I'm going tonight. Keep that in mind. Before the message came, while they were down in Babylon, they were as clear as could be. Amen. Some were shouting, praising God, giving their testimony, inviting their cousins, their aunties, uh, amen, their co-workers, everybody to church. They were going down there, getting their little baby sprinkled as happy as could be, brother. They gladly had their name on that roll book. Proud of it. Grandpa helped lay the foundation to this church. My dad was a deacon. Amen. I mean, they were content and clear before God. 
Come on. Amen, Amen brother. They were clear. No, no sin charged. Amen. No sin charged at all. But 1880 rolled around. 1881 rolled around. And listen, not everybody saw it in 1880. Not everybody saw it in 1880. But a message began to sound. A message began to sound. No, it wasn't popular. The guy preaching it, nobody respected really. Amen. People know the name Diaz Water. They don't know nothing about him. <laughs> Brother, listen. Diaz Water would not be welcome in most Church of God pulpits across this land today. You know why? Because Brother Warner would get in the pulpit and say, Babylon, Babylon, Babylon. This is what, what? You go replace your name. Church of, this ain't the church of God. This ain't it. He's going to say, this is what I stood against. This is what I came out of. Amen. Go read Birth of a Reformation. Go read Birth of a Reformation. He wasn't even an ordained minister. Wasn't even a licensed minister. They, they took those credentials from him. They didn't like what he was preaching. This one church business. That the Spirit of God brings us all together. That the Spirit of God unites us. And that, and that it's wrong to be in division. That's what he's preaching. It's wrong for saved people to be in division. That's wrong. There's one church. You understand how unpopular that message was? Brother, when he first began preaching this, nobody bought it. Four people stood up with him there in Indiana. Four podung, ragtag little group, amen, over there talking about, I'm renouncing sectism. And brother, listen, that thing went under some severe persecution. Some severe battles, brother. But God didn't just show Brother Warner that. He was showing saints all across the country the very same thing. What, 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 what changed some things is he had a paper. And this brother had the nerve, the audacity to write in the paper the crazy stuff he was preaching from the pulpit to send all over the country. And God made sure he started falling in the right hands. There was a brother, A.J. Kilpatrick. Amen. One of the first pioneer brethren. And when he laid eyes on the gospel trumpet and saw the come out message and saw that he, this brother was blasting sectarianism and was blasting, amen, false church of God, so to speak. Brother, amen. He said, listen, God have burdened with me. I've been preaching this. He said, listen, I got to meet this brother. I've got to meet. This. It wasn't long for a few miles up north there in Michigan. Brother J.C. Fisher, amen, got a hold of this message. Amen. And begin to, amen, also preach it. And what happened? What started off as maybe a little voice here and a little voice there and a little voice there began to sing in unison. Come out of her, my people. Yes, yes, yes. All right. And brother, we're needing it. We need it again. Right. Amen. When God sends a call out of Babylon, those people that were sitting there, amen, as encouraged as could be down there, as clear before God as can be, they had a choice to make now. When they heard the message, they had a choice to make. Do I remain down here? Do I stay down here where the Spirit of God is not? Or do I take my stand with a flying ministry? Ain't got a building. Amen. They barely got anybody here to oversee works. They're going all over the country. Amen. I don't even know where they're at half the time. Amen. They got a little paper that's financially barely able to make it. Amen. Do I leave my settled, secure, corner Baptist church? Amen. To go somewhere where they're preaching something I've never heard before. I've never seen before. This is crazy. Come on. Amen, but thank God. Some, amen, they heard the message and they responded, brother. They re in fact, some said, I've been waiting to, I, listen, I can't wait to get out of here. I am going to leap and shout home to Zion. When the voice from heaven sounded. Come on, some people don't even know what these songs are about, brother. They don't know what page 1 through 24 is about tonight. 
when the voice from heaven sounded, warning all to flee from the darksome courts of Babel to Zion free. Glad my heart to hear the message. And I hastened, I hastened to obey. And I'm standing in the truth today. Oh, the Reformation glory. Amen. Let it shine to every land, brother. Oh, we'll tell the blessed story in its truth, in the truth, in the message of truth. We shall ever stand. Amen. They saw it, brother. You're not going to find songs like those church songs, brother, just anywhere. Why? Because this comes by experience only. No, listen, you can connect with these songs when you begin to understand, amen, the message that God is sending. When you begin to understand Babylon, amen, the sea of glass, the church's jubilee, light breaks at last, the bond of perfectness, the reformation glory, back to the blessed old Bible, amen, the church triumphant. Come on, brother. It finally means something. It's not just a good melody. It's not just some good words. But I know in my heart what Babylon is. I know in my heart what the church is tonight. Come out of her. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. When God sends a call out of Babylon, you can no longer partake of Babylon's trough. Amen. The Bible says, lay hands suddenly on no man, neither... Be partaker of other men's sin. Amen. See, that's how some people try to justify staying in Babylon. Well, I'm not doing it. Well, I'm not the bad. I'm not the bad one. I'm the good influence, brother. Your support of that system is condoning what is going on there. You sit there every Sunday. You support that. You drop your money in the bucket, brother. You raise your hand. What you're sending, the message you're sending is I'm behind this. I'm behind this. You're not going to be a good influence down there. You are considered by the Bible to be a partaker. That's why it matters where you go. It matters where you go because you're lending support to it. You're lending support. Neither be partaker of other men's sins. Keep thyself pure. Amen. An old brother about a year ago now, one of his, we, I struck up a very close relationship with him in a very short amount of time. Yeah. Amen. The first time this brother called me, I thought, man, he is never calling me back. <laughs> this brother grilled me. And I was like, man, I don't know if he got what he wanted to hear, but I just told him what I felt. God, I, I mean, I just told you the truth. Brother, after a few weeks, brother wouldn't stop calling me. <laughs> brother, we'd talk almost every two, three times a week. For a while, every Sunday night, I'd be out, got my call. This brother calling me. Brother, we got close. We got close. Amen. In, in a short amount of time, and then God took him. In my last phone call with him, and I'll never forget it for as long as I live. But I don't think I cried so hard about God taking someone that I knew for so short a time. I felt like finally someone that, you know, understands that is receiving it. Amen. And then God just took them. I thought, man, this is tough. But I'll never forget. He said, Brother Nathan, it was our last, probably the last minute of our last phone call. He said, Brother Nathan, whatever you do, keep it pure. He said, brother, I haven't really heard a message like this, I, but brother, keep it pure. Just keep it pure. Keep it pure. And brother, that has stayed with me throughout this year. Whatever I got to do, I got to keep it pure. I got to keep it pure, brother. I was talking to a brother a couple days ago. He said, brother Nathan, whatever you do, you better not mess this up. He said, you better stay humble. You better stay before God. He said, you're no good flesh. Better stay humble before God. You best not mess this up. Brother, listen, we ain't got time to mess anything up, brother. This thing got to be right. This thing got to be pure. This thing's got to be holy. Amen. Pray, saints of God. We need the power of God. You don't need me. You need the power of God. You don't need personality tonight. We've seen personality. You don't need a dynamic preacher. We've seen dynamic preachers. Brother, we don't need a packed out camp meeting. We've seen packed out camp meetings. 
they come and they go, brother, but the word of the Lord standeth forever. Amen. 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 When you, amen, when you partake of another man's sins, Babylon has sinned. You are not able to keep yourself pure. You become tainted. You become tainted. You will not only be affected, amen, but you become uh, infected. You become, amen, you, you become a part of that. And you are, and God renders you as being that. Amen. Some people are not guilty of advocating the spirit of Babylon as far as what they did from the pulpit or the decisions they made as ministers. But there are people tonight, they are guilty because they prop those ministers up. They are keeping it going, brother. They are keeping it going. They know that minister's inconsistent. They know he's not being transparent. They know he's being deceitful. They know he's being deceptive. Amen. And yet they give their allegiance and their loyalty to that every single week. How are you not partaking? It is just as wrong to advocate as it is to support it. Well, I'm not a minister. Well, it doesn't matter. You're a child of God. And you're told to keep yourself pure. Isaiah 52, please. Thank God when the ministry began to preach, come out of her, my people, the church came back into visible view. Brother, listen. The church was not in clear, visible view. Well... 5, 30, 15, 30, y'all already know. The predominant condition. I'm not saying there weren't any saints. I know there were. But the predominant condition was darkness. True. The dark age. Right. People weren't seeing the church clearly in the dark ages. Amen. They weren't seeing it clearly. 15, 30, 17, 30, we call this the dark and cloudy day. They could, they could, get, a, they could get an idea. They could maybe touch it. Maybe for, even John Wesley, brother, he sat there and said, oh, for the day when all God's people will come together in one. But he knew he wasn't living in that day. He knew he wasn't experiencing it. He knew that. Dark and cloudy day. But brother, when they begin to preach in 1880, come out of her, my people. Babylon is fallen. We see the church coming back into visible view. Brother, I say tonight we need the same exact thing. People don't really see the church tonight. I know that's tough for us to admit, but people really don't see the church tonight. They actually, to be honest, people identify more with this. When you speak of terms of the church, it's actually more like this than it is the lamb standing on Mount Zion. Brother, that lets me know we need another judgment message so the church can come back into visible view. Right. Isaiah 52, how are we going to do that? Isaiah 52, verse 8. The watchman shall lift up the voice. Singular. Amen. Singular. The voice. There's only one voice that needs to be lifted up above everybody else, brother. In fact, everybody else needs to be quiet. All flesh needs to be silenced. Let all flesh be silent. Shut up. Amen. Be quiet. Amen. Let God speak. Who's going to lift up the voice? The watchman. Brother, we need a ministry that will get back to the blessed old Bible and lift up the voice. With the voice... Together, so multiple watchmen lifting up the same voice. With the voice together shall they sing, for they shall see eye to eye when the Lord shall bring again Zion. I've heard people teach from this, these scriptures and I've trembled at it before. They want to focus on that shall see eye to eye part right there. That's where they want to focus, right there. 
But you better know what, the, what that scripture is talking about tonight. Because people think it's just we're going to all agree on every single point. That's what seeing eye to eye is. Brother, you better know what the eye represents. The voice represents something. The watchman represents something. And those eyes represent something too. Come on, brother. Come on. Help us out tonight. Who is the voice? Let's start there. Revelation 1, verse 10. What's the voice? V Revelation 1, verse 10. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice. Sound like a trumpet. What's a trumpet? A message, right? Blow ye the trumpet. Amen. Preach the word. Amen. The watchman should lift up the voice or what? Lift up the word of God. Why? Because verse 11, who was it talking? Saying, I am Alpha and Omega. So he heard a voice and who was it speaking? Christ. Christ was speaking. What's the voice? Christ. What is Christ? The word. Well, what did Paul tell Timothy? Yeah. Preach the word. Brother, what's the ministry supposed to do right now? Preach the word. Brother, a fool ain't supposed to be, listen, a fool can't even err in this, brother. People have complicated this. A fool shall not err there. And this is, this is straight. This is plain. This is clear. The ministry is supposed to preach the word. Amen. So what? The watchman or the ministry, they lift up the voice of Christ. And when he says they lift up the voice together, we're getting a picture of a unified ministry singing the same song. The same message. That's why I'm telling you, brother, a unified ministry, amen, is what will give this message power. Because, brother, it can start out maybe as a little one over here and a little one over there, but you get a ministry. Preacher, come out and hurt my people. Brother, it will set the sheep free. It will set the sheep free. You know why? Because right now they're scared. Because a lot of these ministers are shut mouth about this today. And people have it naturally in grace. Sheep follow. It's natural to a sheep to follow. The problem is, is these shepherds, these pastors have destroyed and scattered the sheep. My sheep hear my voice. When we get a ministry lifting up the voice of Christ, brother, the sheep going to come back home. The sheep are coming back home. Brother, we need this message to sound, amen, from shore to shore, across the shore. Brother, wherever it goes, brother, because this is the message that will set the sheep free. This is it right here. Right. Revelation 5, 6. They shall see eye to eye. Let's see what, they, what that means. Revelation 5, verse number 6. Revelation 5, verse number 6. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, elders stood a lamb. As it had been slain, the lamb had what? Seven horns and what? Seven eyes. What are those seven eyes? Which are the seven spirits of God. Sent forth into all the earth. When the ministry see eye to eye, what's that mean? Same spirit in each of the ministers. How can they preach the same message? Because they're motivated by the same spirit. And that will bring the church together because the spirit of God always brings the church together. Brother, listen. You can't have anything but unity when the spirit of God is lifted up. When the spirit of God is allowed to work, you get nothing but unity. And when something other than the Spirit of God works, you get everything but unity. 
I hope that's plain tonight. I hope that's plain tonight, brother. Listen, I have been in meetings over my years in the, around the church of God, in the church of God. Seemed like there for a while there, unity, they were on a kick about it for a while. Brother, there was a couple years ago, amen, a congregation that had been out of fellowship for years, came back together, theoretically. And brother, they shouted the house down. They shouted the house down. Oh, there was people so excited. They've been so excited. Thy children are gathering home type of thing. Brother, that thing lasted, I'll be generous, two years. I don't think it lasted that long. Might have lasted two years. You know why? The spirit wasn't right. They didn't have the same spirit. They were still contending for their sect. They were still contending for their fellowship. Amen. And they, you, you can't. You can't bring people who are contending for fellowships and groups together and make it work. Right. Brother, that's why, listen, I am not interested, really. I'm really not interested in having a minister's meeting where all the ministers from across the country get in a room somewhere and have some kind of talk. Because when the Spirit of God has His way, you get unity. I'll talk to anybody. Listen, I'll talk to anybody. I ain't afraid of no, there, there, nobody I'm afraid to talk to tonight. But me talking to someone does not establish unity. It was either established, it, it, it would have been established or not established before the conversation even started. If they had the Spirit of God, we were already in fellowship. We were already in fellowship. And we should still be in fellowship because unless we backslid on the call, we should still be in fellowship when we hang up the phone. Amen. There, there ain't going to be no kumbaya session where all these ministers get back together and start weeping and hugging one another and it lasts. That's not how unity works, brother. When you got saved, you're already in fellowship with everybody that was saved. Everybody, everybody, every single one of them. So what we got to get in the back room and hash things out for? We either got the spirit of God or we don't. We either got the spirit of God or we don't. Come on. Amen. They shall see eye to eye or they're going to have the same spirit. Right. How are they going to preach the word? How are they going to preach the same word? How are they going to sing together? Because they have the same spirit. Right. When you get a ministry preaching a unified message under the power and anointing of the Holy Ghost, the Lord can bring again Zion. Amen. Brings his people out of Babylon. Amen. Back to Zion. Isaiah 62, please. Let's read some encouraging scriptures here. Isaiah 62, verse 12. And they shall call them the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord. And thou shalt be called sought out, a city not forsaken. Amen, brother. This is a beautiful message tonight. This is a beautiful message tonight. Amen. I thank God we're a sought out people tonight. Amen. I thank God the Holy Ghost sought us out. Brother, if it hadn't been for the Holy Ghost, I wouldn't know you precious people tonight. Really, nobody tonight. None of you. Some of you I've known a little longer than I, but brother, except for the Spirit of God, we shouldn't be sitting here tonight. But the Spirit of God sought us out. Brother, the Spirit of God was faithful. Brother, the yeah, I know men hadn't been faithful. I know systems haven't been, but the Spirit was faithful. And the Spirit led you every step of the way and put you right where you're supposed to be. You didn't think it was right where you were supposed to be. You never dreamed this might be right where you're supposed to be. But here you are tonight. Why? Amen. The Spirit blows where it will. I'm just a vessel tonight that the Spirit of God can move at His pleasure. I thank God I'm sought out tonight. I thank God we're a city not forsaken. God has not forsaken the church tonight you do not care more about the church than jesus christ does tonight i met people act like they're more burdened than christ is act like they're weeping more than christ is brother listen christ spilt his blood he purchased the church he cares about her tonight he cares about his bride he cares about his wife. Amen. He cares tonight. And because he cares, he's sending a message to expose that old false harlot tonight. 
Isaiah 51, verse 11. It says, Therefore the redeemed of the Lord shall return. My, my, my. And come with singing unto Zion. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Brother, you can't rejoice over Babylon and false church of God when you're in her. But in Zion, take your liberty. Testify freely. Sing freely. Preach. Fly in the midst of heaven, brother. Don't clip the wings. Let them fly. Let them fly. Let them fly. And come with singing unto Zion. And everlasting joy shall be upon their head. And they shall obtain gladness unto joy and sorrow and mourning shall flee away. Amen. Amen. Thank God when judgment came out on Babylon. Amen, brother. We get a church that's coming back into visible view. Song of Solomon paints the picture very well. In chapter 8, verse number 5, he says, Who is this? that cometh up from the wilderness, leaning upon her beloved. It's a picture of the church coming back into visible view. Amen. The church in a dependent position, leaning upon her beloved. Brother, we got to lean upon Christ. We need Christ. We need Christ to be the head of the church. We can't do it. Amen. I told you the come out message, amen, has been a historic message for the people of God down through the annals of time. I'll give you Moses. Exodus 9. Exodus 9. I know the hour. I know the time. Bear with me. Exodus 9, verse 13. And the Lord said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh, that old man ruling Pharaoh. And say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, Come with a message from God to that old Babylonian man rule bondage sectarian system. Yes. Brother Moses said, I got a message from the mouth of God, Pharaoh. Amen. Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews. Here it is. Let my people go. What's that sound like in 2023 to old Pharaoh? Come out of her, my people. You know what got him out? Some plagues started coming, brother. Amen. The judgments of God began to be poured out on old Egypt. What's this old man rule church of God need today? Amen. Some plagues, brother. Some plagues. Amen. Pour them out, brother. Pour them out. Amen. Let my people go that they may serve me. For I will. Listen, verse 14. My God, you might want to shout. For I will at this time send all my plagues upon thy heart and upon thy servants and upon thy people. For what? You're going to know who's in charge. Pharaoh, you thought. You thought you were in charge. You thought you had the control. But oh, there's a God in heaven, Pharaoh. There's a God in heaven that thou mayest know that there is none like me in all the earth. Brother, in the evening time, there are seven angels having, Revelation 15, 1, having the seven last plagues. Brother, get out of there. Run for your life, brother, because the plagues are coming on her. Brother, that you receive not that you receive not of her plagues, brother. Brother God, by a mighty hand, led the children of Israel out of the greatest civilization that ever existed on the face of the planet to that time. Up to that time, there was no greater power than Egypt. 
And brother, there wasn't a sea that could stand in their way. God split it. Amen. Stand still and see the salvation or see the deliverance of the Lord. I didn't see a way out. I didn't see my way path forward. There wasn't a way through. But God sent the judgment. And brother, the ministry with a rod, brother, with the word of God, held it over that sea. And the people of God walked out on dry land. Brother, in one moment they were bound captive by the greatest power that existed in the world. And the next moment they got a wall of water here and a wall of water. And they weren't sloshing through sand. That thing would dry up, brother. And they were walking to the other side. There was the fire of the Lord behind them. Backing them up. God will back you up. God will back you up. And when they come running for you, amen, when they come try to pull you back, amen, that same rod that split those waters can roll them back over again and drown every one of them in the sea. Moses said, take a good look. Take a good look. Because the Egyptians you see today, you shall see no more. Thank God. God has always had a come out message, brother. It's a beautiful one. Amen. 16, Revelation 16, 1 tells the angels to pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth or on earthen systems of religion. When the vials get poured out, the light shines. The earth was lightened. The earth was lightened. Honest hearts, listen to me tonight. Honest hearts come to the light. John 3, 21. We'll try to wind this down. Pray our mercy tonight. God help us. But he that doeth truth, but he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. Those who don't walk in the light, you know what happens to them? They have a change of spirit. If we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with God. We have fellowship with the Father. We have fellowship with the Father. But if we don't walk in the light, what's the converse of that? We lose our fellowship with God and we lose the spirit of God, brother. You're going to go walk in the light or you're going into darkness. There's no neutral position about it tonight. There's no neutral position about it. It's a sad day. It is a sad day when the truth of God's word becomes a plague. When people can't rejoice in a message like this. I'll tell you why they can't rejoice in a message like this. Because where they are. You, listen, you can't rejoice. You can't rejoice when you're in her. You can't shout when you can't sing the Lord's song in a strange land. You got to lay your harp down. You got to hang the harp on the willow trees, brother. How? How are we going to sing it here? If this message becomes a plague to you, you're in bad shape tonight. You ain't supposed to have any sympathy on her, on Babylon. None. God is leveling fierce wrath against that system tonight yes, that's why you got to get out of there right. the same gospel that some rejoice in tonight it's blistering others it's blistering others why is he sending this judgment revelation 18 5 her sins have reached not into heaven because there ain't no sin in heaven or not in the church, nor in God's heaven, have reached unto heaven. What is the big sin of Babylon today? Dividing the people of God up into sectism. God does not take kindly to that tonight. God's people are not to, God's people are to be free. Should be the freest people. And they're being held up. Brother, listen, there's some brothers and sisters tonight that we should be enjoying sweet fellowship with 
tonight and there are some ministers that have some blood on their hands tonight. Amen. There are some that are backslidden tonight. And I know, I know everyone makes their own choice and there ain't no excuse for backsliding tonight. But there are influences. There are, in, and ministers hold influence. And they have made decisions. And they have made moves that have caused people to come under that influence and lose out with God. And brother God is holding that ministry responsible tonight. Our children... People I've grown up with tonight. Amen. Have to battle anger and bitterness tonight. Because of the decisions that were out of their control. There are young people tonight that will not darken the door of a church of God building. Because of the sins of this harlot tonight. There are ministers tonight that are abominable in the sight of God because they have sowed discord among the brethren. God's hand is against them tonight. There are ministers that have turned a blind eye to clear, cut, wrong, and wickedness and have patted it on the back, brother, and got along with it. Her sins have piled high tonight. Brother, the only way, the only hope for the backslider tonight, the only hope for lost children that grew up under the name Church of God, the only hope for the bitter and angry soul tonight is for a pure church, amen, under the anointing of the Holy Ghost to send forth his angels to gather back into the kingdom of God. If you're tuning in tonight, not everything that has been called Church of God has been. God is not trying to hurt anybody tonight, but men have hurt people tonight, and God has a plague for them. God help us tonight. God help us tonight. God is against those systems because they do not follow the Word of God and the Spirit of God. And I'm telling you, they've gone too far. And now, retribution. And now payday is coming. The church has a heavenly origin. It's a heavenly place. Dividing brothers and sisters up based on the ideas and opinions of men and not following the word and the spirit stirs up the wrath of God. God has a memory tonight. He says, the Revelator writer said, God hath remembered her iniquities. Oh, you let, listen. Ju equal, judgment doesn't just come in eternity. There are consequences now. There are consequences now. And God is sending out a ministry with those consequences. What are we burning, battling up with tonight? The Word of God. Jeremiah said, my word is like a fire. The Holy Ghost is a fire. What are we burning her with tonight? The word of God. and the, We're calling her out tonight. Babylon, I'm putting you on notice tonight. You're not hiding under a cloak anymore. Brother, you're not getting in the back room with your ministerial buddies and just going to cover it up, brother. We're ripping the cloak off tonight. They ha you have no cloak tonight. Jesus said, look, I came to remove the cloak off those old Pharisees. We're doing the same thing tonight. We're removing the cloak off those old Pharisees tonight. Well, he's been my pastor for 40. Rip the cloak off. Well, I've gone to this meeting for... Rip the cloak off. It's babbling. It's babbling. It's babbling. And if it is, if God witnesses that to you tonight, you got one choice to make come out of her. That's it. Or you receive of her plagues. You say, Brother Nathan, does that seem real harsh? 
Brother, that's just where it's at tonight. Amen. That's just where it's at tonight. Amen. Jeremiah, we'll try to close here. Jeremiah 51, 9 says, we would have healed Babylon. But she's not healed. What, what's God saying? I had the healing for ba I, What could have helped her? She rejected it. Brother, I believe tonight before any congregation movement goes into apostasy, I believe the Spirit of God was faithful. I believe He sent messages. He sent visions. He troubled, star he troubled souls. He tried to help, but they wouldn't receive it. They wouldn't receive it. Before anyone goes off into apostasy tonight, you rest assured, every Every means that could have been exhausted to do otherwise was. By God, by God, by God. God did his part. God did his part. If they refuse it, listen to me. How are you going to help something that God has rejected? You're not more merciful than God tonight. You're not more patient than God. If God can't help them, you can't help them. But that's why, listen, there's some conversations, it's just a waste of time. I, can, I mean, it's, listen, this is futile. I can sit here and try to explain it to you. I can sit here and try to show you the scripture, but brother, you're not going to get it. Leave it alone. He said, but she is not healed. Forsake her. And let us go everyone into his own country. For her judgment reacheth unto heaven and is lifted up even to the skies. When the call goes forth to come out, the devil tries to trick many into thinking they will stay down there and try to help it. That's impossible tonight. You can't help a drowning man by drowning with him. Oh, you're drowning. I feel so bad for you. Let me get in there and drown myself. Come on, brother. If they're not willing to come out, I'm not drowning with you. I wrote an article a few years ago about the Titanic. And I think the title was something about not go, don't go down with the ship or something like that. But when the Titanic had struck the iceberg, many people could not in their minds come to grips with the fact that this great big unsinkable ship is going under. They couldn't, they couldn't, it wasn't clicking. They were sleepy, it was two something in the morning, whatever time it was, early, in the, late in the night. And they're looking at this great big ship that was advertised as unsinkable. Come on, sound familiar? Advertised as unsinkable tonight. You, you, want me to, you want me to get off this ship to get on that, that, that lifeboat? And many wouldn't do it. But many of those lifeboats were not filled to capacity. Because they could not convince people to get on the little lifeboat. Tonight, there's people looking at the church of God, what they've known as the church of God. It's unsinkable. I can't fathom. And you're asking me to get off of this, to get on that little dinky, it'll save your life. Brother, I'll take the lifeboat. Thank God for the lifeboat. Yeah, it's a little cold out here. It's a little, but I'm not drowning. I'm not going down. Amen. I am alive on the lifeboat and I'm heading to safety. You stay on a sinking ship, you're going to sink. If God can't heal Babylon tonight, if God's letting her sink, then there's nothing you can do. Well, I didn't preach half the message tonight, but we're going to leave it there. Someone can uh, get that for us, please.